Let me hit record. Awesome. Here we're gonna get we're gonna get started. All right, guys. So first and foremost, as always, just to prime your mind, get you set up for the call. Remember, try not to multitask. Try to be dialed in. Remember, we don't want to be mindlessly going through our calendar blocks, right? You just you're doing a lot of stuff. You're showing up there, but mentally you're not there and you're not getting traction over time because you're not truly all in and present where you're at at the moment, right? So try the best you can to eliminate distractions at 7 to 8 a.m. You don't have to worry about work right now. You can worry about it at 8.05. But this call, guys, could be the difference of a massive amount of financial legacy for your family and for your family's future. And, you know, that's what the harvest is about, is living life at its fullest, not just professionally, but personally, and being the example for your family, being that person, if you're not, for your family that truly leads the example and leaves a massive legacy. And this call, as among as all the other topics that we talk about in the Harvest Health, mindset, fitness, marketing, business, well, we also talk about investing and we also talk about real estate investing. So this is gonna be a really, really good call. And I'll add one more thing, because I always like you guys to understand how important this call is so you're more dialed in. There are some people right now that are in a business or want to get eventually out of their business, right? Because they don't like it. They're truly not happy. They don't like their career. Man, if I could just find a way to supplement my income, if I could just find a way to supplement my income so that I can go and, and truly enjoy life or truly do have freedom or truly maybe if I can start bringing in income, I can start building another business that I'm passionate about. Well, this call can be the wake up call. This call can be that avenue to help you bring in financial uh, uh, passive income. It can help you build wealth to then leave that job that you're miserable at or retire and not have to worry about financials. So today we're going to talk about real estate investing. We're going to talk about being able to invest in real estate with limited to no money out of your pocket to eliminate that excuse. Well, Devin, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in real estate. How am I gonna buy properties? How am I gonna invest in real estate? And I wanna take it back, let's just say six years ago, and a friend of mine uh, who I speak about a lot in the harvest, and if you don't follow him on Instagram, I highly suggest you do. His name's uh, Nehemiah, and I believe his, his Instagram is Neo Davis, it's N-E-O-D-A-V-I-S. Is that correct, Eric, or did I miss a letter? Neo Davis uh, is- uh, O at the end. Oh. And an O at the end. So I'll drop. But for the most part, I've known Neo for a while and he hit me up and he goes, Devin, I have a friend of mine who's getting into real estate and I would I want to know if he could follow you for a day. Right. By the way, that's his friend. Right. So if you're talking about leveling up your relationships, like what friend have you had that, hey, this my boy has a goal and a dream. Let me connect him with somebody who can help him and see if he can follow him in a day. I've never gotten that call from somebody or that help from somebody. So that's one thing right now, maybe be that person to somebody else. So um, this is when I lived in South Philly. Derek came to uh, to my house, it was like, I don't know, maybe six service early in the morning. And sure enough, he followed me throughout the day because at that time he wanted to get into residential and he'll tell the story, but at that time, the goal was to show him what it was like in residential real estate, being a realtor, right? So then I connected with him and I was like, man, there's just something about this dude. He's completely present completely dialed in. He listens to everything that we're talking about. And then I connected with him and followed him and literally watched him take action on everything. Like there wasn't one thing that he did not execute on, which we all know information is nothing if we do not execute, right? So I followed him, continued to execute. He started growing his real estate business. And then I saw a complete shift into real estate investing. And from, from that point on, Derek, which was not that long ago, um, Derek has built millions of dollars in real, uh, now he's built a multi, multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. And if you follow him, he literally gives the game on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media. Um, but the, the cool thing about this was a lot of this real estate that he acquired, by the way, he's invested into masterminds. We talk to you guys all the time about turning decades into days, investing in yourself, the harvest. This is an investment that you made to turn decades into days to make things happen that typically won't. 
But he's invested, he's learned the skill of investing in community, into coaching, into figuring stuff out. And I've seen him over the course of a few years build a massive real estate portfolio without needing his own money or very little of his own money. So I am very excited to bring on a really good friend of mine. I mean, the guy's 29 years old. To me, he's a mentor to me now. Um, he's an inspiration to me every day with how he actually executes with no fear. And to see what this guy is doing at 29 years old is absolutely incredible, which is why I'm bringing him into the harvest because I care about you guys so much. I want to bring top talent to you guys so you guys can really get to that next level and have no excuses when those limiting beliefs come in or that negative self-talk comes in to stop you from taking action to become that next version of yourself. So Derek, welcome to the harvest, my friend. Good morning. Thank you for taking this time. I know you're uh, up early getting after it every day regardless, but thank you for taking the time to be on here with us, my friend. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm feeling great. That was an amazing intro. Um, I got a couple things. I got like 10 different angles. I want to piggyback off with that, but I appreciate that and appreciate you 1000%. Um, I don't know if I'll be here without you, man. Seriously. Oh, man. Uh, thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Um, but again, like I tell everybody here, man, it's like, you know, information is, is only so much. I mean, we have a lot of people in our lives that inspire us. And everybody has somebody that, but only few take action. Only few take action, dude. So right. so what, what we got so I can yeah. just, just go off? Yeah, let, so let give give them a little bit of uh, of a background, right? Give them sure. a, you know a little bit of your background prior to real estate, just so people can kind of know where you start, so they don't think that you started with family who had multi million dollars in real estate, none of that stuff. And then we'll get into the, the strategies that you teach. So like get right into the money, right? Yeah. How, what do you got going on there? What projects? And then we'll get into strategically teaching people to play how to access money right now. And then I've got a bunch of questions on what to look for and how to find deals and all that good stuff, if that's cool. All right, cool. Uh, all right, let's get right to it. Can you make me co-host? Yes. All right, good morning. How's everyone feeling? Um, I see uh, Kelly, Michael. I see a few of you guys on here, Michelle, Patrice. Uh, if everybody's on here, you can turn your camera on. I always feel like you gotta be locked in. You gotta like be all in, all in. You can't, my, my mentor says, you can't do the small things. You can't do the big things. You got to be all in. Um, so one, Already dropping gems. If you can't yeah, do the small so things, Good morning to every single person. Will, what's going on? Abe, what's going on? Uh, how you guys doing? How you guys feeling this morning? I hope you guys have an amazing morning so far and it's about to turn into an even more amazing day. Um, so just to piggyback off what he said, um, six, well, he said a lot. I'm trying to figure out which angle I want to go in. So uh, you got first and foremost, everybody say thank you to Devin just having this uh, platform, having this whole you know environment for you guys to just learn and grow and just get you know special information because a lot of stuff that I say, a lot of stuff he says, a lot of stuff that's you know that's going on is non Google. You can't Google this stuff, like this is stuff that for wisdom we actually going through every single day. Like you can Google what is real estate, but in the middle of a transaction thought process, mindset, thing, these stuff you can't Google. So you have to get in certain rooms like this so you can get that split, that slight edge. The only difference between individuals here, individuals here, I really believe is just that slight edge. Like you only win a race by a little, like that slight edge. So every day we're just getting up the chase to get that slight edge. And the other side of slight edge, that coin is information. The only way you get that slight edge is by getting the information. Like, okay. How can I just get one more deal? How can I just go ahead and get just a little bit more? How can I make just a little bit more money on a transaction? How can I just get a little bit more? Well, you get a piece of information that gives you that slight edge. So we're constantly chasing information, but also your mindset has to be on point because if you're, I tell this to people all the time, if your mindset not right, I'm talking to a brick wall. It's like, I could tell you like, hey, it's a million dollars in the trunk of my car. You can go have it. But if you're walking to that car thinking like, I don't think I deserve this. I don't, you're never going to pop the trunk. You're never going to go get it because it's literally you're blocking yourself. Like, I, I can't. It's just not for me. So um, my name is Derek Boone. Um, I'm 29 years old. I got started in real estate 2017. But the game changer for me was in 2016 when um, I just said enough was enough. I kind of was just fed up. I don't know. Comment me in here if you guys ever had that moment where you just like fed up. It could be like you could be down to your last zero dollars or you could have just something 
personal could have happened to you where you like, you know, my family member, it's anything that happened. Everybody is relative. Everybody fed up moment is different. But for me, I was working at a retirement home. I was making $10 an hour at this retirement home. And I just was like, you know, like $600 or $700 every two weeks. And I just like, yo, this is like, I'm tired of this. This is enough. And um, I went to this, this class and um, by Nehemiah that he's mentioned and it was just more like a mindset. It wasn't about real estate, just mindset, because I knew I had to get my mental together first. And also, I didn't know about mini class. I didn't know about things like this. I didn't didn't have those resources. So when I just seen someone's having something with the word business in it, it was a business meter. I was like, look, I want to get into business. I want to do something. I don't have a college degree. I don't have a corporate background. I don't have rich parents. I don't have any of those things. I'm, this is the first thing I've seen. So I went and joined it. And talking with him really opened up the doors for me. It was so amazing because this person wasn't in real estate, but they opened the door for me. And one thing I want you guys to understand, every person has a different thing for you. It might not be directly, hey, this person is teaching me new construction, but it might be somebody over here that may be a trainer that's just giving you the right mindset. So you have to be open to multiple different kinds of mentors. So, and, and also... There, it's like um, like a tree branch. It all connects to different ways, like a spider web. So going to that business meetup, he ended up connecting me with Devin, which opened the full door. You understand? Like everything is stepping stone. So I went to the business meetup. We just talked. He said, what do you want to do? Like, like I said, look, I just want to get into real estate. You know, I understand. That's something I always passionate about. You know, um, HGTV, just watch. I just love how, you know, houses work and I read about it, but I never took full action. He said, well, I got this guy. I'll just connect you with, see if maybe he can help you out. Fast forward, Devin, uh, we met um, sometime in 2016. And then he just he just put the stamp on it. I spent the entire day with him. It's actually, it's funny. I met him on the day he was getting a photo shoot done. He allowed me to get a, take a professional picture too, which is still my headshot on my email to this day. Um, that, that, that photo, that headshot got me a bunch of deals, believe it or not. Um, and what happened was we toured the, we toured different properties, different projects, different things all day long. And I was like, I know for a fact, this is what I want to do. So I believe in you have to see something and not all the time, but a lot of times you have to see something to really fully like, this is what I want to do. And he showed it to me and I was like, this is what's going on. So um, fast forward in 2017, um, I, you, obviously you guys know the real estate, you had to take two classes. So by the time March, 20, and then I failed my test nine times, uh, which is a whole nother story, but it is, it's also a lesson in that to never give up. I kept failing back and I wasn't taking time. I was like, and with the real estate exam, you have to wait like maybe two weeks or three weeks or a week, sometime in between. I'm talking about as soon as that time passed, that next day, I'm going right at it. And we just kept going. We kept going. We kept going. And then I finally passed. Um, it's so funny because I went to take my test in a suit because I said the second I walk out of here, I'm going straight to KW. I'm going straight to a brokerage. I, I'm not even wasting any time. So I finally passed. I signed up for KW March 2017. From March 2017 to December to, um, um, 2017, I sold 19 houses, which was more than that. Some of them wasn't recorded because we did like off-market stuff, but we sold on record 19 properties between March and December. Um, and that's just from just locking in, just locking in, networking and doing what you got to do. And also um, we had to put it all on the line. Like we have to really put it like you, like how bad do you really want this? Like me, like I said, I didn't have a rich parent. I didn't have... I, working at a job making 10 hours like I didn't have a whole bunch of options so we had to lock in and even if you have a whole bunch of options right now you still have to put yourself in that space where like yo I want this work so bad all this other stuff doesn't I, I'm not factoring this stuff in like I know a guy he made he does flips he does a whole bunch of other stuff he makes money all different types of ways but he says he lives off of 50 percent off his rental income like, like, I'm so locked in to building up my rental portfolio, even though he doesn't have to. He's like, look, I'm work locking on this because I want this income to be the income I live off of. So I'm not, this stuff is just saving and, and um, reinvesting, but the stuff I'm actually going to live on. So if I want to live better, I need to buy more property. So like, even if you guys have other things going on, like what you really want locking on that, like that other stuff doesn't even matter. So um, that's what I was going ahead and do. Um, 2017, 2018, we just doubled our deals. Um, 2019, I had the, I had the vision, not the vision, but I realized that time is worth more than money and your home is worth more than money. So, um, my girlfriend, which at that time she was like, yo, you're working crazy. I was working from morning to night, seven days a week. 
I'm talking, I was getting up five in the morning and I was going to sleep at 12 o'clock, still doing contracts for offers and different things like that. And she's like, yo, I don't even know when you're ever going to stop. So that's when I incorporated a model like, hey, Sundays is our day. So we spent the entire day on Sunday and I worked Monday through Saturday. But in that exact light, so I was mad at that time, but I actually, looking back, I'm glad because that helped me pivot to where like, okay, now I don't work Sundays no more. Then it pivot to me, I'm only doing like half on Saturdays, but also in the direct, also in the direct light, I maxed out my Monday and Friday a little more efficiently so I can have the weekends off. Um, by doing things, I hired two team, I hired three team members. So I had agents under me. They started selling properties for me and I would get a uh, commission 50% or we do like a 70, 30, depending on the type of deal. It was their lead or my lead, different things like that. And then that's when um, 2019, I was like, okay, I have a little bit more time. We're doing a bunch of deals. We're consistently closing deals every single month. Uh, we set up a whole, we had our whole office. Um, and to the point where KW actually was like, you're doing this so well and you're so young, 20 something, you need to start teaching classes here. And that's kind of how where the whole teaching thing happened because KW was hiring me to teach to the other agents. Um, and then 2019, going to some point in 2019, I can't remember. I was, uh, what I would do is I would wholesale properties to a real estate investor. And then when they finished the project, they give it back to me for the listing. So that's a little hack for you guys. I was getting paid twice off the same transaction. Um, and all my thought process behind that was um, everybody wants to be a million dollar real estate agent. Everybody wants to do it, right? If you're a real estate agent, that's the big thing. Um, so 3% of a, a million dollars, you're getting 30 grand. I was like, but million dollar listings sit longer than usual. So what if I can just make 30,000 a different way? So I would sell a house in the beginning for 15,000 wholesaling, and then I would get the listing on the back for 10, 12, $9,000. So Could you for, explain what host just because uh Derek, like there's probably two realtors in here. Oh, oh, oh okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, Sorry, gotcha, 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 gotcha. But can you gotcha. explain, <clears throat> excuse me, can you explain like what wholesaling is to just so hey, if I find a deal, let's say somebody's on here, they see a property in their neighborhood, right? Man, how can I make money off that if I'm not gotcha. a realtor? Can you explain what wholesaling is? All right, I'm gonna get in there once. Let me just finish this last thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I got you. I'm sorry. All right, so um we were making money, uh, you know, double dipping on the same transaction. And then that's when I realized I'm making a lot of these investors super rich, super wealthy. That's when I had that fed up moment again, where I said, I need to be on this side of the field. I need to start investing. So I started taking the little bit of money ahead. But also what I did, I leveraged something called hard money, which are just lenders that are not true. You have three different types of finance. You have traditional financing, you have hard money finance, and you have private. Private is, hey, Dev, can I borrow a million dollars so I can invest? Then traditional financing, you call on Wells Fargo, put in a full application, giving them your blood type, everything, everything to get a, get approved for a loan. And the hard money is that in between that we're like, hey, we're asking for some documents, but we're not asking for everything. Hey, we we might only need a we need a week or two weeks to give you the money, but we don't need a full blown month or two months. So that's like that sweet spot because a lot of hard money lenders don't require a credit score. Some would lend it's called asset based lending. So they'll lend you eighty to ninety percent of whatever the purchase and the rehab is going to cost to you, and you just had to put down that ten percent. And that was the really the game changer for me. So for you guys that's like, hey, look, listen, I want to get into real estate. I don't have a whole lot of money or I want to get into real estate. I have money, but I don't want to use it. We're leveraging OPM, other people's money. So what I did was I tapped in with hard money lenders. And let's say if I find a house that costs 100 grand and I have to put 50 into it, and when it's all said and done, it's worth 300. The lender will give me 90,000 and the whole 50 grand to fix up. And my only piece was a 10% down payment. And what we do is, and, and what I did, this is one of my first deals. It wasn't the first one, but one of my first deals. Um, I said, you know, what if, I said, do they care where the money comes from? And they said, no, they don't care where the money comes from. I said, you know what? What if I just go ahead and tap into traditional banks and get lines of credit and credit cards? So then I would just cover my 10% with a lot. My first deal, not my first one, but one of my first ones, I covered the line of credit with i mean i covered the 10 percent down payment with a line of credit so this is important guys so i do not and i'll, I'll always stop just so there's a lot of stuff that i want to make sure that you guys don't miss so he obviously said the three different types of financing the one is if you're buying a house 
or your, your kids are buying a house, FHA, conventional loans, stuff like that. And then that is a full application. You got to make sure your credit score is good, your debt to income, the stuff that most people want. Oh, my credit score is good. I can't buy a house. <clears throat> right? So then he said that middle of the road is where the hard money is. That's where you can get the money to buy the house and the money for the rehab. Because what do average people think? I don't have the money to put in the rehab the property now. Right? I can. So hard money gives you all of that. And what he's saying, the main piece is, well, what if I don't have the 10% to put down, right? This is the topic of today's call, how to invest in real estate, <clears throat> i.e. get the money for a buy, a flip, or a refinance out to have a rental property without using any of your own money to smash that limiting belief or that excuse that you don't have the money. And this is what he's talking about now. This is a game changer, guys. This is something you can share with your kids and they become millionaires when they get older. This is something you guys need to know if you are trying to become the next version of yourself. This is a major hack to build wealth. So Derek, continue to elaborate on that. Sorry, man, I just want to make sure. Very good, very good. So the, the name of this game is creative. There's no, all bets are, is how creative can we get? So like I was mentioning, we're utilizing the hard money lenders to go in and cover majority of the purchase. And how can we, we don't leave it there. How can we get even more creative? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and figure out how can I get that down payment piece. So we utilize credit cards, we utilize lines of credit, and then we'll also go ahead and utilize other people's money as far as private money. So we'll mix hard money with private money. So let's say, for example, I have this deal. It's a great deal. We're about to make 80 grand on it, right? And I'll say, hey, look, Devin, I got this deal. I already got the lender. I already got the, um, the, the contracts. I got everything set up, um, but we need $20,000 to put down. Hey, Devin, if you cover the $20,000, when the project is done, I'll give you back your $20,000, $20, and then we can split or 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever we agree upon on the actual profits of the deal. I don't know, comment yes, that'd be something you guys are interested in. I'm not pitching the deal. I'm just saying just in general. Um, and that's what I would go ahead and do sometimes. So we have some individuals that have access to capital, whether it's their own cash or they have their own lines of credit, they have their own credit cards. And I'll say, look, listen, I need 20 grand for this deal. Look, listen, if you lend me the 20,000 or you partner with me, but you cover the down payment piece, I'll call you when a project done. To, to individuals, that's like, what? You're going to run the whole project. You're going to do everything. You're just going to give me updates and call me when it's done. All I got to do is come out of pocket with the money that's needed. Yeah, it's a, it's a no brainer. So we would do that sometimes. It's just all about being super duper creative. How can we do this? So for example, just give you guys real live examples. This week, we have two closings this week, one today at one o'clock, which is a refinance. We're going to be making, we're going to be cashing out $30,000 on this refinance, which I didn't put any money out of pocket on this. Um, what I did was I utilized um, hard money and then a small down payment, which was like 17 grand. It was like seven, 17 or 16 grand that we needed out of pocket. I utilized that from an individual, like I just mentioned, hey, do you want to put up the 17,000 when the deal comes back? I'm, we structured out where I'm giving them 17 back plus another five or six grand. So they're about to make five or six grand. They, they never came to the house at all. So they're just getting a free, I don't say free five, but technically a free five. And um, now the second deal, um, which is a sale I'm doing is a flip. It's closing on Friday, which we're about to make a net after everything's said about 130 grand. And, what we, and this is crazy about this because always look at, we're just getting creative. Always look at um, how can we turn a positive, turn a positive from a negative. I actually got to a car accident um a couple months back and they totaled the car out and they the, they gave me a check for 40 30 something thousand dollars my down payment on this house of forty thousand dollars so i just utilized the cash out from the car and that just used how my so it's all about how how could we get creative so we turn a negative car accident to to a six-figure payout so these are two live transactions that's happened this week that is all utilized from hard money and then the down payment piece is used from someone else's money whether it's um, credit cards, whether it's um, lines of credit, whether it's, I don't even want to say like this, an a incident or someone that has access to that type of capital. And I always say, you don't need Jeff Bezos, Mark Cuban, Jay-Z, all these multi-billionaires to get started. You have private money in your phone, believe it or not. Like a lot of these are like, there's probably people in here that's, that wants to do multi-million dollars deals, but 
be honest with you, I don't know where everyone is from, but if you're in Philly and Jersey, like you're probably going to be doing three hundred thousand dollars deals, four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars deal, two fifty, six hundred. These deals don't require four hundred thousand down payment. A lot of these are twenty thousand dollars down payments, forty thousand dollars down payment, fifty. The biggest down payment I ever put had to put down was like eighty something thousand dollars on a house, like, and that was a commercial mixed use building. Like majority of these deals aren't like Devin. How many ten million dollar houses are being sold? Like, so I don't want you guys to look at like, oh, I need to go ahead and get a Mark Cuban to be my my private money part person when you only need thirty grand. We only need 40 grand. Like you could probably call an individual on your phone. Hey, you want to invest with me 30,000 or another hack we would do is, and this, this is super hack. If individuals have like a 700 or plus or credit score, what I would do is like, I had a family member. I said, look, what I'm going to do is you have a 700 plus credit score. This bank that I personally utilize are giving credit card limits up to 50,000. You apply and when you get approved, you then kick the money back to me so we can go invest in it. The money came back. I paid off the credit card for them and then gave the money on top of it. It's all about how can we get creative with this stuff? They they were a regular average Joe. They just had a 750 score and we leveraged it. So they're not a multimillionaire. They're not a billionaire. But we got creative how exactly we can go and do this. So um, that's pretty much I want to show them you know, a couple of different things. I'm going to share the screen. But yeah. this is uh, some of the things that we we have done and we still continue to do. And now um, that was 2019 when we got started. Fast forward to 2023. Um, we have like uh, this under, well, I'm selling two houses now. So we have um, about $7 million worth of real estate right now um, from uh, duplexes, single families, triplexes, four units, five units, commercial mixed use buildings, um, lots, lands, we're building new construction. We have a bunch of different things going on. Um, all in Philadelphia. I pretty much invest in the same two zip codes. Um, so I got houses all in the same block next door to each other, things like that. Um, I'm big on proximity. So um, we have an in-house contractor um, construction team. So they're just going next door. They're going around a corner. Like everything needs to be five minutes from each other. I do not like driving far at all. So that's pretty much what has been happening from 2016 when I met Devin all right now. And um, one, always remember who helped you out when you got started. So he can call me. He can call me for anything. I'm always there, uh, 100. And likewise, every time I need him, he's right there too. So, um, that's my story, just to piggyback what you said. But I do also want to show you guys some live game, how we actually, you know, find these properties, how we structure these deals, and then you know we can ask a couple questions, and then, um, then we just take it from there. Love it. I think you should be good to go with the screen. All right. Um. Uh, so I want to I want to just take while I share my screen I want to answer uh, one of these questions. Uh, how long does it usually take a deal to turn around? So uh, it depends. I've done deals in two three months, and I have done deals where it took me a full twelve months on bigger bigger houses. So it really depends on the property. It depends on the project. Um, also, what's the period you hold the house for? It doesn't hard money also mean big interest rates for? That's a great question. Hard money usually gives you eight percent, nine percent, ten percent, eleven percent, twelve percent interest rates. I really wouldn't go with anything over 12%. And you got anything eight or nine, especially in this market, that's free money. Like I would definitely take it. Regular conventional is 7% right now. So if you get something like that, that's that's perfect. Um, but the name of the game is get in and get out. So if you're paying high interest for three months, or four months, but if the outcome is a six-figure check, who really cares? Yeah. Like who really like who really cares if you have a if you have to take a three hour drive to go somewhere. But when you get to the three hour drive, you're about to have a multi million dollar conversation with Devin. Who really cares about the drive? You have to make sure that what you're investing in and the interest that you're paying, the outcome is way over that. That's what really all that matters. But yeah, the name is out. get in and get out. Speaking of you mentioned Jay-Z, he had a line. And I was thinking about this the last week. Mm -hmm. It was like people know the cost of everything and the value of nothing, right? Like the cost, oh, well, it's going to cost me this. Well, what is, how valuable is that benefit going to be when you really exactly. think about it? Exactly. Uh, you know what? Like, well, I mean, I got to pay this, but what is the return if it all goes well? Oh, you're not thinking about that, are you? Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I, you, I, I didn't feel like getting up at 6 a.m. morning to go to South Philly was hard to park at with him 
six, seven years ago, but I did and it was worth every, like it was 100% worth it. So you got to think about, okay, what is like, this may be an inconvenience, the interest rate may be an inconvenience, but what is the payout? That's what really matters. Like, um, like we always say, like when we're negotiating deals and doing things, we're not selling the pieces, we're selling the payoff. Hey, homeowner, you working with me, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, I can list your pictures for you. I can go ahead and do this. I can structure it. I can, the payoff is I'm going to get your house sold in 30 days or less. And this is what's going to happen. And this is about the amount of money you're going to be looking at getting. Is that something that works out for you? The payoff, not the pieces. All right. So let me show you guys something. Love that line. Listen, what'd you say? So I love that line. Look at the payoff, not the pieces. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, so um, this is a system that we utilize. It's called prop sharing, right? So um, one second. This is uh, a system that we get to and utilize it's called prop sharing. So um, I would tell you guys, we own multiple properties. And uh, believe it or not, I bought one house off the MLS, one house with a real estate agent. All Everything else is off market. So what we mean by off market is, we are directly calling a homeowner. We are directly negotiating with the homeowner. We are directly doing everything with the homeowner. There's no real estate agent. There's nothing else involved. And to be honest with you, I personally, hold on one. And to be honest with you, I like that a whole lot. I like that a whole lot. I like that a whole lot better um, because there's not a third. I, I hate when I talk with someone and they have to ask someone else something. I want to go directly to you. Let's get this done right now. Um, like even like some of the, I don't like doing like bank loan deals, shorts. I don't like the fact that I'm talking to you, but you have to call someone else to get permission. So that's just me, how I operate. So I go directly to the homeowner and it's been working amazing for us. Um, because now we can get the deal done directly right there. Um, and it's less red tape, it's less BS, it's less of everything. Um, we have been very successful with this. Like I said, we bought multiple properties on the same block, all around the same neighborhoods and all, all different things like that. So um, what I'll go ahead and do is, um, this is really like, this is really some stuff I'm about to show you guys. So this website is called PropStream. It's like a real estate search engine. So I'll take this website, and I'll type in a zip code. Um, this is one of the uh, neighbors I invest in, 19140, 19140. It's around Broad. I don't know where everybody else in here, but it's around Broad and Erie, nice town, Tioga area. And the reason why I started investing in this area because they're building a hotel right there. They're building like a 300 unit apartment building. They got a lot. And then actually the city is, is on Broad Street. The city is actually closing out one of the lanes to make the peninsula right at the intersection bigger because of all the, the development and all the influx of people that are about to be living there. So they're taking out one of the lanes and making that more walking space for individuals. So the city itself is putting money into the area with, along with investors. So um, that's why I started double down in this area. So what we do is we type in a zip code 19140. And then as you can see, just by typing in that zip code, we got 22,820 properties that came up in a matter of seconds. Any type of deal, any type of option, any type of scenario I have done in a real estate, I promise you, I have knocked on people's doors. I have cold called. I did mailers. I've done door hangers. Um, I've cold called. I wrapped my car saying I buy houses. Um, I did real estate agent transactions. I help people that, you know, they the relative died, they own a the house. We had to go through courts. I've done any transaction you can think of. I have personally ads. I've done it. When I tell you what I'm about to show you guys right now is probably the easiest, I don't say the easiest, the most effective one is 100% is. Um, I used to ride around, write down addresses, anything. So how much did you collectively, just so everybody puts this in perspective, when you think about all those trials that you went through, all those different ways to find deals, tens of thousands of dollars invested to figure out oh, yeah. what you guys are about to find out now. This is why I say like, the value of this call, if you guys really see what is being given to you on a silver platter, guys, be dialed in and value this because he's went through tens of thousands, not over a hundred grand to figure out that this was actually the most effective one. 
100 100%, 100% and we're big on collapsing time we're big on collapsing time um one one other thing is real quick just just raise your hand or comment yes in the box is a million dollars a lot of money it is not it's not a trick question it's a lot of money it's a million dollars a million bucks a lot of money but is it is it a lot of money if it takes you 10 years to make it not really no is it a lot of money if it takes you a year to make it yeah is a lot of money if it takes you a month to make it is a lot of money if it takes you a 30 day uh two weeks or a day to make it so if you notice money means nothing it's the time attached to it so if you can figure out how to collapse time and close uh, uh we as real estate we we divide up how much you're making on a profit upon, based on how many months you take so if you do a ten thousand deal but you took you 10 months to do it it's a thousand dollars a month it's not really worth it but we got to figure out how we can collapse time this has collapsed time for me so we'll go ahead and click here one second why is this so you see we got twenty two thousand eight hundred twenty properties all right here but the thing is with this we don't want all 22,000 of these because there's different types of deals, single family, multifamily, land, commercial, warehouses. We don't want all these types of deals. We have to figure out one of the questions you have to ask yourself, what kind of deal are you looking for? What kind of, am I looking for multifamily properties? Am I looking for single family properties? I'm looking for lots. I want to build new construction. What the hell am I looking for specifically? So what we do is we hit this filters tab right here and we can start narrowing down on our search. So we can do hit if you want to be i don't say lazy but you want to be efficient i guess you can hit this drop down box you say hey i'm looking for vacant lands now we got two, 2300 2398 vacant land vacant lots or i can say look listen i don't want vacant this is incredible. Land. i'm in i've been in real estate for 10 years i didn't know this <laughs> i want free and clear property i want properties that have no mortgages 17582 or I just say, hey, I want properties that are tired landlords. Landlords are sick and tired. 4,986. Um, or this is where I really started making some money on uh, failed listings. So for you, for you guys that don't know, failed listing is a real estate agent lists a property for a month, six months, a year, however long they list it for. And if the real estate agent can't sell that property, the listing then turns into a failed or an expired listing, means it didn't sell. There is no one more motivated on the planet Earth than someone that calls a real estate agent and says, I'm willing to pay you to put a, a for sale sign in front of my house to sell it. I It doesn't get any more motivated than that. I went to the full, because I can just text a couple of people I want to sell, I can do. But I said, I need help. I'm going to call you. I'm going to pay you thousands of dollars to sell my house. So just because the property expired, does that mean they're not motivated anymore? No, nah, they still want to sell. That agent just couldn't get the job done. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go to failed listings and we'll go after this full list of properties. Also, we'll narrow it down even more to like, this is just failed listings, but we'll narrow it down to specifically which kind of house in the failed listings we'll go after. And then we'll call them and say, hey, look, listen, um, do you still is do you still own this simple script? Do you still own what text messages? Do you still own 2235 West Ontario Street? Of course, they're going to say, well, yes, I know that, but I'm acting like I don't. Oh yes, I still own it. Okay, great. Is it is it still for sale? I saw it on a, I saw it on a, on online. I was just curious. Is it still for sale? They're gonna say yes. What's your offer? Or they're gonna say no. They just so happened to sell it and it wasn't updated in MLS. Either way, you're getting a response. So they're gonna say, let's say they say yes. Okay, great. And that's when you start the negotiation. That's when you set up a showing. You really don't have to set up a showing too much because all the pictures are still online. It was just already listed. So now we got that. But here's the thing: they're always willing to take less. Why are they willing to take less? Two reasons. One, they already weren't getting the price amount of money, $74,590. They already wouldn't, they already were not getting that money amount of money anyway. Why not? Because the real estate agent was taking a piece of this. So by default, you can subtract the commission off this price and make that your offer because the seller already mentally wasn't getting that money. Let's say this is four thousand dollars commission. Let's just say now you can offer seventy thousand dollars. They're willing to take that because they already weren't getting the full $74,000 anyway because they had to take the commission off the top. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, who in their right mind is going to give someone full asking price for a house that's set for a year at that price? Nobody. It's been sitting for a year. Why the hell would I give you your full asking price when you couldn't sell it on the market where millions of people can see Zillow, MLS, Realtor.com? And it's still didn't sell. Why would I give you that? So now there's another discount right there. 
So we was killing them going after this method because now we could just go in directly to the homeowner. We literally just back door and got and went right after the agent got fired. And now we're going to get tech on these discounts on the property that were, was, we weren't probably going to be able to get when it was listed on the market. So, and then now they're at the most fed up stage. Like, oh my gosh, I had us sitting for a year. It didn't work. So that's one heck for you guys. And here's another heck for you guys. So what we'll do is let's reset this. Boom. And then this is when you want to really take it to the next level. We'll put our own search in. So this is just a quick list choice. I do this and the system automatically develops it for you. So what I'll do is I'll go here and I'll do it myself. So MLS data stands for multiple listing service. Realtors, listen. So right now, interest rates are high as crap. So with the interest rates being so high, properties are sitting longer because buyers are, are a little more reluctant to buy. When properties sit longer on the market, what happens? Prices drop. So like, for example, I had the property I'm selling this, this Friday, I had it on the market for 425, I took an offer for 410. But because I know how to find deals, I'm still making six figures on that deal, even though I took a $15,000, $20,000 pay cut. So that's one thing that I want everybody to just write down, find a great deal. Because in the times like this, where you need to take a, a cut or a discount to get the property sold, you can still make a profit. But if I was like some of these other guys where I was only making 30 grand to begin with, taking 15, $20,000 off is like, it just takes me all the way out the water. Like I just can't do it. But because I got it so cheap, it, I, I could have took 40 grand off. I'm still was gonna make a, a bag. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So um, remember, you make money when you buy. So we click this MLS status right here, and we'll click my properties is on the market. Yes. So on the market, hit active. Now, but what we'll do is we'll hit days on the market. I'll do things like, hey, I want something that's 70 days on the market, 80 days on the market, 90 days on the market, something that's been sitting for at least 90 days. They're getting a little frustrated right now. So when I hit 90 days on the market, right, we'll go ahead and close this box out. Now we got 13 properties. So now you're like, Derek, we only have 13 properties look like, but you just used to have 22,000. I got 13 motivated sellers that are also probably fed up. If you have a mortgage in your house and you're paying a mortgage every single month while you're trying to sell out, you're fed up. Like imagine you're paying $1,000 a month for a vacant property. Um, let's say, for example, you have a property, the tenant moved down. You say, look, I don't want to re-rent it. The tenant process was already a problem for me. I just want to go and sell it. I'll pay the mortgage out of pocket because it's only going to take me about a month or so. so I'll pay $1,000 a month one time. I'll pay the $800 a month one time. What happens when it goes into month two? What happens when it goes into month three? Okay. Now we're a little frustrated. Now, look, listen, I'd rather sell it at a discount than keep paying this mortgage every single month. That's where you come in at. So now we can go here, let's say 15, 14 West Erie. I own a house. Wait a minute. I own a house two doors down from this. I literally own a house two doors down from this. This might be something I'll look at. So we can see we hit this button, MLS details. They're selling this property for $389,000, right? It's pretty high. Um, I have a four unit that appraised at $420,000 uh, at 1511. Um, so this has been sitting on the market for 110 days. So we know they're not getting any traction. It's clear as that. It's been sitting 110 days, almost coming on six months. So then what we can do is we can scroll down here and we can go ahead and have Justin is the real estate agent. So we can go ahead and just call Real estate management advisors ask to speak to Justin or we have Justin's phone number direct and call him and go ahead and make offers direct because we see that this house is just sitting. It's literally just sitting. So we can, and also they already dropped the price by six grand. So we see that they are, they are willing to take less. So we're just paying attention to little indicators like, okay, something's going on. Something's going on. We can go after that. And like I said, imagine, imagine you guys, if you went after and just said, look, listen, I'm going to just call all 13 of these houses today and I'm just going to make a low ball offer. And that's what we do. We literally just call and we make low ball offer and just work our way up because it's easy to work your way up. It's hard to come down. So we'll all go right. here and we'll say, OK, like let's say this property was one hundred sixty two thousand. 
it's been sitting on the market. It's been sitting on the market 114 days. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll come in like 30% under that and then I can work my way up. So let's say I come in this and I'll say, hey, look, I'll give you, I, I'm willing to give you 130 for this. And another little hack is as real estate agents and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Devin, you have a listing, your, your, your seller gives you their bottom dollar, nine times out of 10. Hey, look, listen, I'm selling for 300, but between me and you, like, I can't go under 260, like just between me and you. I don't want to do that, but I'm, so me and you on the same page, I can't come back down to 260. So Devin, if I call you and I say, hey, look, listen, I'm a real estate investor. Um, I'm a real estate investor. Uh, I own properties all in this block. And I seen your property. Look, listen, I want to put a cash offer in sight unseen. I don't, I don't even need to look at it because I own a house two doors down, like what we just talked about. Um, I know that block. I know everything. I, I, I can tell you what's going on underground. That house, you probably don't even know. Like, I want to make a cash offer. Um, I want to say it verbally, and if we can agree upon it, uh, we can go ahead and do it formally. Um, I want to make a cash offer about two fifty. Two fifty, right? Now, Devin, nine times out of 10, you already know that your seller is can't do anything under 260. So you're going to say, hey, look, listen, that's not going to work. You have to come up, you know, X, Y, and Z, because I'm not going to bring this back to him because I, I have to, but I really don't want to because it's disrespectful. It's under what he needs. But now what if I say, look, listen, I want to make a cash offer for 265. And what we do is, especially Devin's a little more experienced, but with a lot of these new agents, as soon as I hear them say, uh, let me double check with them. I know I got them. Because if you know for a fact that your seller wouldn't even take anything close to that, you would check me right there on the phone. No, I'm sorry. You know, that's not going to work. Um, I don't even want to bring that back to them. That's not going to work. But as soon as I hear the agent say, uh, you know, let me double check. Let me get right back to you. I know they have, they might not have that much wiggle room, but they have some wiggle room because you wouldn't even have said that over the phone. And that's how we get them every time. Like I have a bunch of mentees. I have a bunch of people. We're buying houses 20, 30, 40% off. This is this the same exact method. We're, right now it's on the market time. It's not, you can do off market, but right now it's on market because these houses are selling on the market deeply. Dis I just told you guys, I sold my house $20,000 off. This, this is the time. So I just wanted to show you guys this real quick because yeah. this is literally what we're doing every single day. The same system, the same everything. To go ahead and lock in and um and get things done um and just so guys real quick just to pull it back um man i wasn't expecting him to go into giving you guys a platform to find deals so not only are we talking about investing in real estate how to get money and, and if you guys miss that i want you to remember he said there are like as far as the strategy to get credit lines right let's just say i shared a video right that you talked about opening llc's to get access to capital now so a few things before we wrap up, I just want everybody to understand what you just got on this call, um, how to find these deals. You literally got the program to figure out how to find these deals and hit, hit, nod, nod. If you go after any of these damn properties, you better be calling me or Derek up if you're submitting <laughs> the offers. But regardless, you got a whole platform to find deals. So he just laid that out for you. He laid out how you guys can get money to actually buy deals too. So the first thing is, um, Derek, I want you to kind of briefly go over a quick strategy that people can unlock money with the LLCs. And then can you kind of go over like, uh, like what could go, like how, like finding deals is one thing, but you need other pieces to the puzzle to actually execute renovating a deal, like all that stuff too. So can you give people, man, there's not enough time to really go into everything. Like what could go wrong? And guys, I know a lot of this stuff too. So if you have any questions about, all right, I'm interested. I learned it's like, but what do I need to look out for? Um, obviously follow Derek on Instagram immediately guys, cause he puts all this content out every single day, but I'll be able to help you get more dialed in on all right, This is the team you need. This is what to look for. This is what not to look for. Um, but I want you just Derek to go over how they can, what strategy they can do to unlock money today or tomorrow. Cause I know you have those strategies and I guess, you know what, forget about that. Go over just some brief scenarios of like what mistakes you made. Like, you know, when you do an agreement with somebody to get private money, it's not yes. as easy. Like you got to have shit in place, right? Legally and all that stuff sometimes too. So can you just give them, go over I that? Give them one, I give them one to each. So, uh, really quickly. And then I didn't, we having so much fun. I didn't realize time. So I got to uh, leave at eight out of 10. Yeah. But um, really quickly, one of the, the best 
I'm going to say one of the best. But here's a gem for you guys as far as unlocking capital. If you have a 680 or higher, that is the minimum they'll do. Obviously, the higher, the better. But if you have a minimum of 680 or higher credit score, you can go to a bank called Key Bank. Go to a bank called Key Bank. And if you have an LLC, you, can, you don't have to have an LLC, but it's better if you do have an LLC. So if you have an LLC and you have a 680 or higher credit score, they will give you up to $50,000 on a line of credit or a credit card, no documents needed. It's called a no doc program. And the reason behind this is because, um, you got to think about it, $50,000 is a nice amount of money, but to institutions, that's not like, that's not, that's nothing. They're lending out hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. So it's more work getting all your documents for a twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar loan. I mean, or a line of credit, credit card, than it is, you know, trying to do all this other stuff, right? So as long as you go in and apply and say, hey, look, listen, I'm looking for a forty thousand, forty five thousand dollar line of credit. You can do it when they're not. They're look. All I'm telling you this. I've done this plenty of times. They're literally going to just look at your personal credit. They're going to look at your EIN number on your LLC. Your, your LLC doesn't even have to have full official business credit with a DUNS number and everything. You're going to co-sign on your business card, personally guarantee. And as long as you ask for any digit under 50, they're not asking for a tax return, they're asking for a bank statement, they're asking for a stub, they're not asking for a W-2, they're not asking for anything. As long as you have over a 680, you have an LLC, you can get, now the range, I can't guarantee the range, like some people might get 30, some people might get 45, some people might get 50, some people might get 25, but you will get something for sure. And the other piece about this is they pull from Equifax. And the other piece behind this is a, it's a soft pull. So they're not even going to do a hard pull on your credit. So you literally have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And that can be utilized to go ahead and cover your down payment. So that's one of them. That's one little piece for you guys. Um, the second piece, uh, um, how I found contractors, um, three ways, referrals. Hey, Dev, I just see you finish up the project. Your drywall looks clean. Can I borrow you? Can I, can you refer me your guys? Boom. The second thing is I will go around neighborhoods. There's a lot of construction going on and I would just get out the car. The guys up on the ladder. Hey, look, listen, that siding looks good. Like, you know, do you have a card? Boom. I'm looking at it right there. I see they're working. Now I go ahead and get their phone number. And a lot of contractors aren't good marketers. So they are looking for their next job. So a lot of times they'll walk, they'll walk me right through the house. Hey, look, check the house out. Look, like that's not the house they own, but they want to market their work so they can get the next job. Because a lot of investors don't have 20 properties lined up. You might know a couple, but the vast majority don't have 20 houses lined up for their contractors. They might have one or two jobs for them. And then the contractors off want to find their own money after that. So that's contract. When a contractor knows that they're, they're hey, come in the house. Let me show you the tile we did. Let me show you this. Here's my number. Take me down. And I will get contracts that way. And then third, believe it or not, Instagram. So I would type in the word electrician, electric on Instagram and Devin Electric comes up and I go through his work. I looked at the pictures, I look at the videos and I reach out and then send him out for a quote. So I would get contracts with those three different ways. What a coincidence you just that. said. When we talk about I pound on social media all the time, you literally just said you find contractors on Instagram. You know how many contractors are, oh, I don't do Instagram, blah, blah, blah. They're missing hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. because of that. Yeah. Prime example right there. Yeah. I definitely got, I definitely got three of my guys from Instagram. I still use to this day. I got them Instagram like a year or two ago. I still use them 100% of this day. Um, uh, so those are the three ways you guys can find contractors. And then the last thing, um, a mistake that I made, um, the biggest mistake, honestly, the biggest mistake that you can make, honestly, and it's not, and it's not even a mistake because if you buy a house right, you're still not going to fail. You might not make as much as you thought you were going to make, but you're still going to make something. Like, for example, my situation, I said I thought I was going to make $20,000 more than I am, but I'm still making something. So it's not, you're never really losing when you buy right. But what can happen is if you underestimate, the biggest thing you can do as a real estate investor is underestimate how much it's going to cost to fix up. That's right, the biggest thing. You go in a house, you're like, oh, I'm just going to need 30 grand to go ahead and do this house. Turns out you need 60. That might blow your whole thing out of the water. Um, Hey, I, I bought this house. It's only going to take me two months to do it. It takes you seven months. Blows you out of the water. That's when the hard money, monthly payments, interest payments start really kicking your ass. Like those are the things that really, really, really you can mess up on. So one last thing I want to leave you guys. Always, always, always worst case scenario. 
hey, I did this before. And I'm telling you guys, a hard money lender said, look, listen, we have a four month loan product. We'll give you low interest, low fees if you only want to do this loan for four months. But if you had to renew, it's going to be more than what it usually is. I'm like, this is the easy house. I get it done in four months. We knock a wall out, realize there's something behind it that we did not um we did not factor in, end up taking seven months to do the house. End up taking seven months to do the house. So now you're like, oh shoot, now when we had to renew the loan, I end up paying more than if I would have just did it the right way, the 12 month loan to begin with. So all we just factor in worst case scenario, even if you say I'm gonna get done this in a month, don't do it because something can happen which can push everything back. It sits on the market longer than you thought if you're flipping it. You're trying to refinance. The bank is playing games or you just forget about this. This really happened to me. You forget about your credit card that's on file, paying a monthly subscription um, expires and you forgot to change the card. Now you got a late payment on your on your account. And now the lender's like, hey, I don't want to um, refi with you anymore because of late payment. Like things can just happen. And now you're like, oh, shoot. Now I can't refi anymore. Now, so it pushes everything back. So always give yourself more time. And always make sure your budget is healthy enough. That way, we call it oh shit money, where it's called contingency spend. We're like, okay, look, I think this is going to cost $50,000, but I'm going to have another $20,000 contingency. So that way, if something happens, I still have this cushion money that can go ahead and utilize. So these are some, those are, those are a couple of things that always factor in that. These are mistakes that I personally made. I went over on a budget before. I had a hit happen on my credit before. I had thought it was going to be done in a month and it took four months. All these things happened to me. So those are the things that I, you know, I want to say to you guys that, um, so you guys don't have those same mistakes. And awesome. No, you don't need a license. If you're buying and investing, you don't need a license. You want to buy, sell somebody's dream house and represent them. Yeah, you need a license. Uh, what about PropStream? Can anybody use that program? Is yeah, yeah, PropStream. Is, so prop stream is uh, $99 a month, totally worth it. But if you guys want to play with it, if you go to endlessprops.com, this is a link, you're able to get a seven day free trial on it. So you go to endlessprops.com, it'll give you, um, you go directly through that site, it'll give you seven day free trial. And then you can play with it, do everything we just did today for seven days. And if you like it, then upgrade to the $99. I've been, I had this for a year and a half now. So, or it might be two years, it's two years now. I paid every single month. It's on auto pay because it's 1,000% worth it. Like I just showed you guys, I was able to collapse time. All of my houses came from this besides one house I bought on the market. Incredible. So guys, listen, I know that this was, again, we talk about everything in the harvest and it's all to benefit you financially, personally, professionally. This is more geared towards real estate. I know, but this is very important because real estate is the number one wealth building strategy in the world. It is the ticket and you can literally own a million dollar property with putting a, only a hundred thousand dollars out of your like you know what i mean this is a very big wealth building strategy for you your family there's a lot of investors in here follow derek guys share the call right this is how we support these people who get paid thousands of dollars to get the knowledge that you guys just got right now so please share the call share derek um obviously take action and don't try and do this yourself. That's why you have the community. That's why you have the hearts. Reach out to Derek. Reach out to me. But just know we have real estate investors in here. Don't just off on a limb. Like, lean into the community if you are going to take action on some of this stuff, which I hope that's the goal why you're here. Reach out to us also to get some tips and strategy and stuff like that. You're not alone when you're in the harvest, and that's why you're in this community. Derek, thank you so much, brother. Keep being the example. Keep leveling up. Keep inspiring people, man. And uh, I really do appreciate your time, brother, your true inspiration. And uh, I just thank you, man. Thank you for being on this call, guys. Thank you all for showing up. I appreciate you making that investment into yourself, as always, being consistent. And uh, you guys have an amazing week. And again, follow Derek. I'll, I posted his Instagram in the page. I'll repost it in the Facebook page. And uh, let's, let's execute, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.